Hello, how are you doing? Hope is another blessed, blessed time. I'm so much excited to be here today. I'll be speaking about a very unique topic here, which is uh, asking, what is the assurance of salvation? You see, there are so many people who don't have the assurance of salvation, and they keep on asking, how can I be able to know? How can I be so sure that I have salvation? How can I be so sure that... Uh, I'm doing the right thing. How am I sure that I'm going to heaven? And uh, today I'll speak to you about uh, the assurance of salvation. And uh, from the Bible we see the word assurance in the King James uh, Bible comes about, it's, it's spoken about seven times. There are seven times that the Bible, King James Version, mentioned the word assurance. And uh, that's what I'll be speaking about today. And... Uh, let me write here uh, assurance, uh, assurance, assurance. So there are seven times that the Bible, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Seven times that the Bible speaks about assurance. And uh, the before we come to this, these seven times that the Bible speaks about assurance, i like first to tell you about assurance only comes by faith. Salvation is all by faith, is all by believing, is all by trusting the word of God, trusting that what God has said is able enough to fulfill it. So that's the only way we can get assurance of salvation. Uh, let's start with uh, Romans 14.22. Uh, Romans 20, uh, 14, verse 22. Romans 14, 22. And uh, the Bible says, 22, the Bible says, Has hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that, did, uh, that condemneth not himself in the thing which he alloweth. And 23, and he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith, for whatever is not of faith is sin. So the Bible says in everything that you do, you should not have doubt. You should always have faith. If you're eating something and you're prayed about it, don't doubt. If you're doing something and you've already prayed about it, don't doubt. If you're, the Bible tells you that you're being saved, then don't doubt. The only time that you can be able to doubt is if you don't have what you're believing in. If you don't have the assurance of salvation, that's the only time you should be able to doubt because maybe the Holy Spirit is telling you uh, to uh, you you may not have the Holy uh, you may not be saved and that's why you're doubting because even the Bible tells us in uh, Hebrews eleven six that without faith it is impossible to please God. So if you don't have faith. In whatever you have believed then it is very impossible for you to be able to please God so you must have faith 2nd Corinthians 13 5 2nd Corinthians uh, 13 uh, verse 5 the Bible tells us also 13 5 examine yourself whether you be in the faith all right examine yourself if you are in the faith okay uh -huh. Prove your own selves. Know that you uh, know ye not your own selves. How that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates. Who are reprobates? Lost persons. So you should examine yourself and ask yourself: Am I really in the faith? Am I believing? In the gospel, am I believing in what Jesus told me to believe? Am I sure? Examine yourself. Ask yourself, am I really believing? Prove your own self. Understand your own self within. And the only time you understand your own self and you get to understand, am I in the gospel or am I not? That's the only time you'll be able to have faith. Because unless you understand something, you cannot have faith over something that you have not understood. Doubts are always there. Doubts will come as long as you're not saved. You will have doubts. Doubts come because of several things. Like I told you, maybe the Holy Spirit might be, convict, might be convicting you, may be convicting you to be saved. As well, 
uh, probably you're trusting in something else. You may be trusting in something that you did. You may be trusting in your own self, in your own works. And that's why you feel, uh, am I really safe because I did this thing? I did this thing. I'm... Uh, am I sure that this thing that I did saved me? Am I sure that this thing that I did might have given me salvation? Maybe you're trusting in a certain prayer you said. Is, do you believe, if you believe, is that prayer which you gave, you gave you salvation? Maybe did I say the right words? Did I, did I speak it in the right tone? Did I, you know, I, 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 I spoke that, like most of the people who always say the sinner's prayer. They're always doubting themselves every day. I used to be like that before I got to understand the gospel. I used to cry every day on my bed and cry and ask God, did I really pray enough? Did I say enough? Did I say the sentences with the right tone? Did, maybe did I forget one point? you see because I was trusting in a prayer I was trusting in something that I did not something that Jesus did for me so it's very important to trust in what Jesus did for you not what you do for yourself and that's the only way you can get assurance of salvation all right so salvation is by faith so without faith there is no salvation if you don't have faith then believe you me you have no salvation all right, so may maybe just uh, before I start, I can tell you the various things that people think that salvation is. Salvation is not, salvation is not, salvation is not, I will tell you this, is not repeating a prayer, a prayer, Salvation is not repeating a prayer. There are so many people who think, because I repeated this prayer, now I am saved. No. Salvation is not repeating a prayer. Now, let me ask you. What if you you, you go, maybe those people go uh, door to door. They are preaching to people inside uh, their houses. And then you get, uh, maybe you get into one, uh, a certain guy's house. And then you tell him, hey, do you know hell is coming? People are going to be burnt. Uh, in hell and then say oh I don't want I don't want to go to hell so what can I do then you tell him hey uh, what you need to do is repeat this prayer after me just say Lord Jesus come into my heart and all those kind of things and maybe he's just at the door and he's holding a, a can of beer here or he's doing his own thing so he doesn't really care what is happening he just repeated a prayer and then you're gone and then you go say wow I want one soul to Christ is that person saved does he really is that person really saved because he repeated a certain prayer? Because he said something? Is he really saved? No. A prayer does not save. The only thing that can save you is believing in the gospel. Understanding what is the gospel. Understand in your heart, not a prayer. A prayer cannot save you. A prayer can literally not save you. The other people who think that uh, I'm saved by being baptized. All right. In water there are some people who think because I've been baptized in water I am saved I got myself in water and came out is that what Jesus told us to, uh, is the solution for salvation did he tell us get baptized in water and that's how you'll be saved there are so many people especially Catholics all the time they are going and they say because I was baptized and I was uh, and I did some confessions now I am saved let me tell you you'll go to hell or wet that's the only way I can tell you. Uh, there are some people who say, I am saved because I joined a certain religion. Joined a religion. There are some people who say, because I joined this church, I'm a member of this church, I give tithe to this church, or maybe I follow this denomination, I am saved. You think you're saved because you joined a certain religion. Let me tell you, a religion never saves. Actually, when Jesus was here, his biggest critics and the people that even he didn't want to listen to were the religious leaders. Why? Because they are always hypocrites. All the time, Jesus was saying, you hypocrites, you believe with at to, uh, you believe at uh, in me with your lips, but your heart is very far from me. It is only you do you give you're giving me lip service, but your heart is very far from me. These religious leaders, all that they wanted is to walk in the streets, and then you know people are saying, Hey, Bishop, hey, Bishop, Archbishop, you're you see, they like greetings from the marketplace, but 
they don't believe in God. They don't even know what the gospel is. They don't even understand who Jesus is. So joining a religion does not get you saved. So there's a, there is another team of people who say they believe they are saved because they asked Jesus, uh, sorry, Jesus, in your heart. All right? There are those people who say, you have to ask Jesus, ask Jesus in your heart. All right? Ask Jesus in your heart. These people think that because, I think I'm saved because I, I asked Jesus into my heart. I said, Jesus, come into my heart, come into my heart. Is that what Jesus told us? Did he tell us to ask him inside our hearts? Or did he tell us to believe the gospel? You see, these are doctrines which have been created by people, and we call them the traditions of men. The traditions of men. Show me one Bible verse, just one, which says, and Jesus told them to ask him into his heart, into, the, into their hearts or something like that. There is not even one Bible verse like that. Do you know something that whenever you're saying, uh, I'm asking Jesus into my heart, do you know there are even things that you can invite inside you by just asking them? Even demons, you can invite them by just asking them. And there are even demons called Jesus, all right? They are there. They are there called Jesus. Even... Uh, there is even one which was called Bar Jesus. There is, uh, I don't know. There, there are so many. Just ask those ex satanists and all that. There, there, there are some. So, if Jesus himself, the true Jesus Christ, told us, believe the gospel and you will be saved, then why are you asking another guy inside you? What if you are asking a different Jesus? How many footballers are called Jesus? How many people from Spain are called Jesus? What if you are asking, hey, Jesus, the. Uh, you know, all those, the, whatever, Spanish names, come into my heart. Which Jesus are you talking about? Jesus did not say he will be inside you this way by asking him. No, he said, believe the gospel and you will be saved, all right? So asking Jesus in your heart does not save you. Then there's another one, another team which says, ask Jesus to save you. Ask Jesus to save you. There are people who say, I think I'm saved because I, I asked Jesus to save me. I told Jesus, please save me, please save me, please save me. There are those people who think, because I asked Jesus to save me, now he will save me. No. As a matter of fact, there are those people who think, the time that um, uh, Peter was starting to sink uh, in, uh, in the water when Je he saw Jesus coming. Then he said, Lord, if it is you, let me go. Let me also come where you are. And then he started walking. And then he said, he started sinking. And all of a sudden, Peter said, Jesus, save me. And then Jesus uh, took his hand and he saved him. And they think because Peter asked to be saved, he was saved. You know, one thing you forget is that Peter was not asking about salvation eternal salvation he was asking about a literal saving from water from drowning in water so you are there thinking that ask jesus to save you how will he save you and that is not the way that he said he will save he said he will save people by believing the gospel all right so asking jesus to save you that does not happen what happens is you pray and say, Jesus, save me. Then Jesus in heaven, he, he sees and then he says, all right, the, this person, John, here, he wants to be saved. Now I'm going to send someone to tell him the gospel. So um, angel, whoever, go and send someone to that guy. He wants to be saved to be told the gospel. And then he will hear the gospel and believe. So asking Jesus to save you, that does not save you. You're only saved by believing the gospel, all right? And finally, there are those guys who think that they have been saved by doing, doing something. All right? There are those people who think, because I did something, I have been saved. This, maybe I, I, I gave some, I gave tithe, maybe I went here, I did this, or... I, I don't know how to explain. There are so many people who think because I did this or I did that or I did that, I've been saved. No way. You can't be saved by doing anything. There's nothing that you can do to be able to gain eternal salvation. Your righteousness cannot take you to heaven. The Bible tells us our righteousness, the righteousness of man is like filthy, 
filthy dung to God. You know, it's so filthy that it cannot even take you one meter close to God. So you're only saved by the finished work at the cross of Jesus Christ. So once you believe that, all these other things are just things that you do. These are traditions of men. These are things which came up. Uh, you see the Bible, uh, Paul was always saying that, I know, I've already told you the gospel, but after I depart, there are wolves who are going to come and give you another gospel. I'm telling you this, every day I weep day and night because I know after my departure, wolves, this is message from wolves, all right? Wolves will come and then they'll start preaching another gospel of do this, do this, do this, all these things. The Bible tells us you are saved by faith alone in Jesus Christ. You're not saved by works, lest you should start boasting and saying, it's because of my prayer. You know, I had a very long prayer. I prayed six hours straight, so I think I'm saved. You, you prayed only two hours. I prayed six hours. You prayed 30 minutes, so you can be saved. You know, people will start boasting. You know, I pray in tongues. I pray in this and that. No, it's not by your prayer. It's not by being baptized. You see, me, I was... There are those people who say, I, I actually went to be baptized in River Jordan in Israel. So I think my baptism is very original than yours because you are baptized only in the bathtub. No, it's not by these things that you do, you know. I, I joined a big religion. Our church is big. It has 10,000 people. Yours is very small. So I don't think you're really saved. Ours, ours is taking people to heaven. No, that's a lie. Asking Jesus in your heart. Because I asked, maybe I asked so loudly, I asked it, it's like the way somebody goes to do a proposal, eh? engagement. You know, I asked Jesus to save me at the middle of the road, at the middle of a park. At the, you know, I did it at the mall, everybody had it. I, I asked in a very major way, that cannot save you. Asking Jesus to save you, doing something, that is not what saves you. So you have to literally understand this for for you to be saved, that all these things that I've told you here are just stories by men. Different people, different people who are coming up with their own doctrines. So now, let's start checking here the seven times that the Bible has been, uh, has been able to speak the word assurance. And let's see, do we have assurance of salvation? And what does it entail? The first time we see the Bible speaking about assurance is in the book of Deuteronomy 28.66. Deuteronomy 28.66. All right. Deuteronomy 28.66. So it, the Bible gives assurance of something. Let me go there. If you have a Bible, please go there. Deuteronomy 28. Mm, 66 Deuteronomy 28 66 the Bible says and thy life your life and your life shall hang in doubt before thee and you shall fear day and night and shall have none assurance of thy life all right the Bible is saying hey you are going to have no assurance of your life why one day you're going to die. The Bible assures us, it assures us very well that one day you're going to die. So the Bible already assures us we are going to die one day. So when you hear you're going to die one day, what comes in your mind? You get so much scared. You get scared why? The moment you see somebody fearing death is because they have a wrong gospel. They don't know if they have believed the right gospel. They have believed in things that they did. They have believed in other things which don't really count for salvation. And they are so much scared because the Bible has already given assurance that, hey, I assure you this, one day you're going to die. So the moment somebody knows, oops, I'm going to die one day, he's scared. So when you find yourself being scared about death, instead of rejoicing, then just know that you have the wrong gospel. Let's see the second time the Bible talks about assurance is in the book of Isaiah 32, 17. Thirty-two, seventeen. All right. Isaiah 32, 17. Uh, 
the Bible tells us something. Let me go there. Let me go there. Let me go there. Isaiah 32, verse 17. The Bible says, And the work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. And the work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness shall uh, of righteousness quietness and assurance forever all right the bible tells us very well that you have assurance of his righteousness assurance of his righteousness we have assurance of his righteousness if you know you're assured of his righteousness, of the righteousness of God, then why would you be afraid of, if you're saved or not, why would you be afraid? Is my salvation legit? Am I really assured? But the Bible has told you you have assurance of his righteousness. The same way it has said, I have assured you one day you're going to die. But I've also assured you that your righteousness, the righteousness of God will also abide in you. I have assured you that. So you have an assurance of something else here. Because the Bible says, when you are saved, you get peace. When you are saved, you get peace. Which peace is this? Because you are in peace with God. You are at peace with God. Through the blood that Jesus shed on the cross, you are at peace with God. So he is not angry at you because you already have the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So you have peace. So you know you are safe. You know you are safe. So if you are at peace at God, with God, you are also at peace with people and you are also at peace with yourself. All right? And also the effect is quietness and assurance. So the effect of that peace is going to be assurance and quietness. You will always be quiet and you are assured. You are really settled down because you know you have his righteousness within you. That is one of uh, the seven assurances in the bible and uh, as i as i speak about this you know you may wonder how can i have this assurance and uh, i know myself i know all these things that i've done over the years i know myself and yes uh i've i, I i've had the gospel but how, how will i really be sure that i have righteousness of god how can i be sure you see, most people cannot be sure because they don't read the Bible. You don't read the Bible and you don't really check what the Bible says. Let's, let's, let's go to Romans 5.17. Romans 5.17. Um, mm -hmm. 5.17 all the way to 20. Let's see what the Bible says. For if by one man offense... Uh, if, for, if, for if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the, of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. If sin came by one guy, this one guy, Adam, brought sin to the world. And now, because of this one man, Adam, there was sin in the world. Then also, it is very possible from one guy, who is Jesus Christ, the whole world to be righteous through him. All right? Are you seeing the assurance of righteousness? Because we became sinners because of Adam. But we are also going to become righteous because of Jesus Christ. Let's see verse 18. Therefore, as by the offense of one, of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto the justification of life. So if the offense of one person, condemnation came to the whole world, then also by this one guy, Jesus, the free gift of salvation can also come to the world. So you can get righteousness. You are assured of righteousness because of this one man, Jesus Christ, who also came and neutralized what one man, Adam, did to the whole earth. Let's use of verse 19. For as by one man disobedience, uh, but for, but, uh, for as by one man disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. One man 
Adam disobeyed God. But because of the obedience of one man who is Jesus Christ, so we have what? We have been made righteous. Righteousness. You have assurance of salvation because you believed in this one man who obeyed God. All right? And verse 20. Moreover, uh, moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. The law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. You see, the law came so that you can tell us, hey, this, this is what sin is. The whole action of the law is to show us what sin is. The reason why God brought the laws of Moses is to tell us, hey, you see, this is what sin is. And because we know sin, we are already condemned. But by one man, grace also came through. Because of Jesus, we also were able to understand the grace which comes with obedience and which comes through trusting in this man, Jesus, and we are saved. So this one man made the whole world go uh, you know, go very bad. Everything was so messed up, condemnation. But one man came through justification. So it all depends in which man you believe. If you believe you're condemned, you'll be condemned forever. But if you believe Jesus came with grace, then you'll, you'll be saved. For those people who are still believing in the law and still saying, you know, I believe, I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to do this. The Bible says, Christ is the end of the law to all those who believed. All right. So if you believe the law is over, the law is a curse, the law is a burden, it's going to only show you your sin, but it cannot save you. For those people who think, I will be saved because I give tithe in church, I'll be saved because I'm a seventh day Adventist, I, I follow the Saturday, I pray on Saturday, not on Sunday. Others, they say, you know, I follow the law on this, I follow the law on this. The law is a curse, my friend. Don't even follow it. Follow Christ, follow the cross. The Bible says the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who have, uh, but to us who believe is the power of God. So the message of the cross, it is everything. So you need to believe that. And you need to follow the message of the cross. Because that's the only thing which can, uh, can be able to save you. Alright? Let's just also check uh, 2 Corinthians 5.21. 2 Corinthians 5.21. The Bible says, For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made righteous of God in him. So God made Jesus who knew sin to be sin for us, so that us who are sinful can be made righteous. So you see, Jesus being made sin just for us, you know, you have to understand, if this guy was made sin, he was sinless and then he became a sinner so that i can get salvation then he must be a very special man i must trust him but if you trust in the things that you do you trust because i said a prayer because i went to a certain church because i did this and this i'm saved then you will die with your sin all right so let's come to the to the other point where the bible talks about uh, assurance is in the book of acts 17 31 acts 1731 at 1731 let's go there uh, at 17 verse 31 let's see what the Bible says because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained, whereof he has given assurance unto all men, in that he has raised him from the dead. All right? So God gives us assurance that he is going to judge you. Remember, God has said he has given us assurance here. I give you assurance. I assure you that I will judge you. He says, God will judge you. All right? Be assured of one thing. God will judge God will judge you and also be assured that Jesus rose those are two sh two assurances that the Bible tells us in the book of Acts 17:31 be assured that God will judge you someday 
when people hear that God will judge them someday, they are like, wow, I don't want to be judged. You know, I can sink my head in the sand and just say, I don't want to be judged. Uh, God, please don't judge me now. There are people who say, I always say, check my friends and tell them, hey, watch the news, see what's happening, see what's happening. Many people, they just say, I rather just sink my head in the sand and just stay. I, I don't want to hear that, you know, the news is really bad. You, you, you can't just sit down and say, uh, you will just stay like that because you don't want to hear what's happening in the world. It's like hearing that God will judge you and then you just say, no, I, I don't want to hear that God will judge me. No, he's going to judge you. Be assured. He has given assurance that he will judge you someday. And that is an, uh, an assurance. And also, he has also assured that Jesus rose. For those people who think, yeah, yeah, there's a guy who was called Jesus. But I don't really believe that he rose. No. God has given assurance in the word, of in his word here, in the scriptures, that Jesus rose. And that is a fact. And you cannot deny that fact. It's very, 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 very important. All right? To understand that let's go to the other point where uh, the Bible talks about assurance Colossians 2 2 Colossians 2 2 and uh, when we go there let's see what the Bible says Colossians 2 2 <coughs> the Bible says that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and to all riches of the full assurance of understanding, and the knowledge uh, and the knowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father of Christ. All right. So the Bible tells us, I want to give you full assurance of understanding, the full understanding of uh, of the knowledge. Hmm? Of the knowledgement of the mystery of God, of the Father and Christ. So here is talking about the <clears throat> is talking about the full assurance of understanding. Full assurance of full assurance of understanding. So the Bible gives you a Full assurance of understanding. To understand what? To understand the mysteries which are in the Bible. God says, hey, there are so many things in the Bible. There are so many things which are leading to knowing the truth. But I will give you a full assurance if you search for what is written in the Bible. So if you don't search, the Bible tells us, study to show thyself approved. A workman rightfully dividing the word of truth who who needs not to be ashamed. Why? Because if you study, if you follow God's word, you are assured of one thing. You will not be scared because you will not be saying, I don't know if I'm really saved or not. You will have an understanding. You will have a full assurance of understanding of the knowledge of God and of the things that God has written in the Bible. You will have a full assurance of that. So if you don't have assurance of salvation and you're always afraid and always saying, I'm not sure, then you're not reading the Bible. Then it means you are not reading the Bible. So some of you might really ask me, why understanding? Why understanding? You know, why understanding? Let's, let's go and read um, Acts 28, 26. Acts, the book of Acts 28, verse 26 to 27 28 26 to 27 let's see what the bible says here saying <clears throat> go unto these people and say hearing they shall hear and shall not understand and seeing you shall see and not perceive for the heart of these people is waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes have have they closed lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and should be converted and I should heal them. So the Bible says, please, I need you to do one thing. Understand with your heart. Understand with your heart. All right? Understand with your heart. You don't have to understand in another different way. Understanding is from the heart. It's not from anything else. So if you understand it from your mind, then you'll not be understanding the word of God. You, for you to understand with the heart is you have to hear 
And then once you hear, the Bible says, to be saved, you have to hear the gospel. All right? Hear. For you to be saved, you need to hear the gospel. Hear. You have to understand. All right? You have to understand the gospel and you have to believe. So if you have not done these three things, these three things, you cannot be saved. You have to hear the gospel. So you can't say, I'm saved because, you know, I, I, I had this like, certain guy who is called Jesus. Yeah, do you know Jesus? Yeah, I know Jesus. Oh, I, you know Jesus? Okay, you're saved. No. Everybody believes there's Jesus. Everybody believes. Even the, the, the Bible says, even demons believe and tremble. They even know, they believe there's Jesus. Jesus was there. But a demon saved? Is Satan saved? You know? No. Just because you believe there's a man called Jesus who existed, that does not save you. All right? It does not save you. Believing that. But you have to hear the gospel. The gospel is what saves you. All right? You have to hear the gospel. All right? And I'll speak about the gospel as we, as we wind up uh, uh, later on. So you have to hear the gospel. I'll tell you what is the gospel later on. So you have to hear, you have to understand, and you have to believe the gospel. Very, very important. When you do those three things, it will be very, very easy for you to understand and to be saved. Let's go to Ephesians 1.13. Ephesians 1, verse 13. And... Uh, 13. In whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after you believed, you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So after you believe the gospel, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So you are assured, verse 14, which this Holy Spirit, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession and to the praise of his glory. So what is the purchase possession? The purchase possession is you. God has purchased you with his own blood. Jesus has purchased you with his own blood. So you are property of him. Your soul is purchased. Your body is nothing. Your body will be redeemed at the day of redemption. But your soul has been purchased because your soul never dies. So when you believe in the gospel, Jesus buys with his own blood. The blood that he shed at the cross. Let's check down there. Verse 15, wherefore I also, I uh, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of, of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the, of the glory uh, of his inheritance in the saints. So the Bible says, I want you to know, to know, to understand, to know that you have the blessed hope. Know, all right? The Bible is very clear. He tells you when you understand, you will know that you're saved. You will know you have the hope, all right? But if you don't understand it, then you will always be worried. Do I have the assurance? Am I really assured? But when you understand, you will know, all right? The Bible tells us you will know. All right, let's continue here down. <clears throat> then uh, the other point where the Bible speaks about assurance is 1 Thessalonians 1.5. 1st Thessalonians 1 5 1st Thessalonians 1 5 Let me go there 1st Thessalonians uh, 1 verse 5 All right The Bible says for our gospel came not unto you in word only but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. So Paul here is saying the gospel came not only in word but also in power and in much assurance because we also know what kind of people we were. If you don't know your past, you cannot know your future. The reason God 
always uh, uh, makes sure that you can never forget the things that you did when you are not saved. It's so that you can always know what man of a man you are before, what man of a person you are before. And because of this knowing who you are and who you are right now, you have much assurance and power. You know, you have much assurance. And the assurance comes because you understood the gospel. The assurance. Let me write here, much assurance. So now you have much assurance. In what? In the gospel. You have a lot of assurance in the gospel. You know what kind of a person you are. But now... Because you have been redeemed, you have assurance in the gospel. You had and you understood the gospel. And now you are assured. And the Bible tells you, get, I have given you this assurance in the gospel. When you remember where you have come from and where you are right now because of what you believe, then you have assurance of salvation, all right? You have assurance of salvation. So this should not even, you know, and that assurance is very, very important because it will always give you that understanding the right to know that you have been saved you have been saved you have been saved you have been saved you see there are so many people when they hear the word gospel they think this matthew mark john and luke there are people who when they hear gospel they think matthew mark john and luke no these are called the gospels all right, these are gospels, but we have the gospel is First Corinthians 15 1 through 4. This is the gospel. The Bible did not tell us to believe in the gospels, it told us to believe in the gospel. All right, as a matter of fact, let me also tell you something else. Eh? The Bible tells us. In, uh, uh, in Hebrew, that where there is a testament, there also should be a necessity of the death of the testator. All right? Where there is a, a testament, there also must be the necessity of the death of the testator. Who is the testator? Jesus Christ. So, if Jesus Christ is the one who brought the New Testament, then it means... In these books, Matthew, Mark, John, and Luke, the testator was still alive. So he had not effected the, the testament. So this, 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 Matthew, Mark, John, and Luke, they are still part of the Old Testament. Why? Because the testator has not yet died, who is Jesus Christ. When the testator dies in these books, and he dies from the book of Acts onwards, now we are sure that now the testament has started. And that's why the people who say we get the gospel from these books, they should know something called dispensation. And I think I've, I've spoken about the dispensation in another video, and I'll also be speaking about it later on. But this is the gospel. You're, you're saved by believing in the finished work of Jesus Christ. That is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. How that Jesus died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. All right, that's the gospel. It's very, very important to understand that. Let me continue here. Point number, point number six, point number six. Uh, Hebrews six eleven. Hebrews six verse eleven. The Bible also tells us about assurance. Hebrews six eleven. 6 verse 11, the Bible tells us the assurance uh, huh, of salvation here. And it says, and we, and we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. So, the Bible talks about the full assurance of hope. Full assurance of hope. Full assurance of Of hope. Hope in what? The rapture. So you have full assurance of hope. The blessed hope. This is the hope. When you are saved, you have assurance of 
being raptured when Jesus comes, you have full assurance of hope. Hope is the blessed hope. The blessed hope that you're going with Jesus in heaven. Let me also let me just read for you about the blessed hope. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 4:13. 1 Thessalonians 4:13 all the way to 18. 1 Thessalonians 4 uh, 13. Now listen here. This is the hope that God gives us, the full assurance hope that He gives us, the blessed hope. 1 Thessalonians 4 13. But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, those who have died already, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Alright? The Bible is talking about hope, as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and even so, uh, them also which sleep in Jesus will also God bring with him. So if we believe that Jesus died and he rose again, so the one who rose Jesus, who is the Holy Spirit, will also rise you up again because you believe in him. All right? Verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will, uh, shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So you already have hope. You have hope, you know. I'll also be taken up. I have a hope of salvation. I have assurance. Assurance of hope. So once you believe that and you have that assurance, then don't fear anything, okay? Let's go to the other uh, assurance which you have been told in the Bible. That is in Hebrews 10.22. Hebrews 10.22. Hebrews 10.22. All right, <clears throat> the Bible tells us something here in Hebrews uh, 10, verse 22, all the way to 23. The Bible says, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies was washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for is faithful he that promised. So the Bible tells us very clearly about this. Let us draw to him with the full assurance of faith. Faith from the heart. Full assurance of faith. Full assurance of faith. Alright? Full assurance of faith. But it has to be from the heart. Alright? The Bible tells us, let us draw near to him with the full assurance of faith. Alright? From the heart. It is very important to have faith. Hmm? To have faith from the heart. Faith in what? Faith in the gospel. Believe in the gospel. Have faith from your heart. Alright? If you have faith in something else, then you'll always be lacking assurance of salvation. There are those people who think, I'm not really sure if I'm saved. Why? Because you have faith in something else. You don't have faith in what Jesus told you to believe. You don't have faith in the gospel. Alright? Do you have faith in the gospel? The faith in the gospel is the one which saves you. Not faith in what you do. It's not faith in baptism. It's not faith in... In a, a certain prayer is not faith in something that you do. It is faith in gospel. So if you have faith in something different, you'll always be feeling, I don't know if really I'm saved. I don't know if I'm really saved. I don't know if I'm really saved. Hmm? Let's go to Ephesians 2.8. Ephesians 2.8. Ephesians 2 verses 8. 8 to 9. The Bible tells us, For by grace you are saved through faith, and not... And that's not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You're not saved by anything else. It's not of your own things, it's not of your own works that you should start boasting and saying, you know, this and this and this. When the Bible tells us, repent and be saved, what does the word repent mean? Repent means a change of, 
a change of mind. Change your mind, all right? Change your mind from what you're doing to something else. It also means turn from one thing to another. Hmm? From trusting this, from trusting idols to trusting the true God. It also means feel sorry. Feel sorry for what you've done. You know, repenting does not mean uh, stop sinning. That's a very different thing. I'm not advocating for anyone to sin, but it does not mean stop sinning. Why? Check. There are over 32 different times that God repented. And God repented that he created He created man. God repented from destroying Israel. God repented. God repented. Was God a sinner? Repenting does not mean turn from your sin. It means changing your heart, changing your mind from one thing to another. Feeling sorry. God repented for having created man. God felt sorry for having created man. God repented from de destroying Israel. He changed his mind from destroying Israel to not destroying Israel. You see, the word repentance is taken by so many people thinking that it means stop sinning. And that's why anytime you have done something wrong because we are living in the world. You may be going and then somebody, you, you remember, I've just lied to someone or I've done something wrong to someone. You live in condemnation 24-7. You're like, oh, did I really, is there anybody who I lied to today? May Jesus come and then I'm left behind. I don't know if I said anything. Oh God, please just save me again. Save me again. Save me again. Because you live in condemnation. The Bible says with Christ there is no condemnation. There is no condemnation. Once you are saved, the old is gone and the new has come. You are now under the cross. You are no longer under the... Uh, uh, you, you, are, uh, you are now under the cross. You are no longer under the law. All right? You are not under the law. Eh? Nothing. You can be under the law. All right? Let's, let's, let's see something here. Romans 1.16. Romans 1.16. Romans 1 verse 16, it says something here. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So the gospel of God is the power to salvation. So this gospel, the gospel is the power. The power. Alright? So the gospel saves, not something else that you do. The gospel. Okay? Alright? Let's see Romans 3.22. I'll just read quickly a few verses which is showing you that the gospel is everything. Believing in the gospel is everything. Romans 3.22, it says, Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all upon them that believe, for there is no difference. All right? Faith of Jesus unto all who believe. Believe in what? Believe in the gospel. Okay? Romans 3.28. 3.28. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. You are justified by faith. Faith in what? In the gospel, without the deeds of the law. If you think you are justified by the deeds of the law, no. You are lying to yourself. Why? Galatians 3.24. Galatians 3.24. For those who think that you are justified by doing some things, the things of the law, by doing what, you know, I have to give tithe 10%. No. The Bible says he loves a cheerful giver, not someone who keeps the law. Those people who keep on teaching that you have to give 10% so that you are in law with God. That is an Old Testament law. They only want to eat your money. That's the only thing. So you have to understand very, very well that we are already out from the law. The Bible says he loves a cheerful giver. Give, you can even give 100%, but you're not inclined to giving a certain percentage. Nowadays they say, come and pay your tithe. Pay. You're only paying to the pastor. You're not paying to God, you see. You're following the law. Why? Galatians 3.24. 3 verse 24. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after the faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For all are the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. So, the law was just to point us to Christ. Now that Christ is come, now that grace is come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. Now we have changed, alright? We are different people. We have changed. We are no longer there. Hmm? Alright? Ephesians 3.17 Ephesians 3, 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, Christ may dwell in you, in your hearts by faith, you see? It's not in your heart because of something else, no. It's in your heart by faith, 
by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. You see, salvation is like getting married or getting born. When you are born, can you say, oh, I'm not really sure if I'm born. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if my mom really bore me. I'm not really sure. Salvation is like that. You see, you can say you're not born. Once you're born, you're born. You're born again. You're born. You can't be unborn. You cannot be unsure that you're born. It's like getting married. Once you've been married, you've worn the vows, you've worn the ring. You can start saying, I'm not really sure if I'm married to that woman. I'm not sure if we really got married. No, you have a ring. You have signed the certificate. The same thing. We are married to Christ. We'll be married to Christ. Actually, we're exposed to Christ. So salvation is like marriage. It's like birth. You cannot say you, you cannot doubt. You cannot doubt, my friend, all right? You know that you're saved. The, the Bible tells us you can be able to know that you're saved. You can be able to have assurance to know. Let's go to John, 1 John. 1 John 5.13. I tell you why you know. You know, you know, you know, you know that you're saved. 5.13. Uh, 5 verse 13 uh, it's saying these things I have written unto you that uh, that uh, these things I have written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life that you may be assured that you have eternal life so when you read these things and you understand you know that you have eternal life. Nothing can take that one from you. So if you don't know, then you have no assurance of salvation. Then you have not believed in the gospel. If you don't know. So how do you know? The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So the only way you will have faith and know is by hearing the word of God over and over and over and over. So, because the word of God tells us everything about our salvation. It tells us everything. All right? Uh, 2 Timothy 3.14. 2 Timothy 3.14. 2 Timothy 3.14. Uh, to 15 it tells us but continue thou in the things which you have learned and has been assured of knowing of whom you have learned them and that from a child you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith which is in jesus christ so the word of god is able to make you wise unto salvation you are able to understand oh yeah I am saved. I know. I'm sure. The word of God is able to make you be sure that you're saved. All right? So you have to have faith. Faith, faith, faith. So you have to have faith in what? Faith in the gospel. Faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. Without shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. The faith in blood of Jesus Christ. Blood of Jesus Christ is everything. Let's check Romans 3.25. Romans 3.25. In whom God has set forth. To be a propitiation through faith in his blood. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through for the forbearance of God. So you have faith in the blood. Faith in the blood. Alright? Faith in the blood. Alright? You have to have faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. Because that is the blood which was shed for your sins. So that you can be able to be... Uh, to be saved. So it's very, 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 very much important to have with this faith, all right? So when we trust the gospel, we receive the promise of Abraham. You see, Abraham was told he loved many sons, he loved many children, and we become the children of Abraham by faith, all right? For those people who tell you you are not children of Abraham, you are not... Pa no, you are children of Abraham by faith. Let me show you Galatians 3.14. Galatians... Uh, 3 14 let's check there and i and i show you you are a child of abraham the this the seed of abraham galatians 3 14 that the blessing of abraham might come on the gentiles through jesus christ all right that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith so the bible tells us the blessing of abraham might come on the gentiles through faith in jesus christ so when you have faith in Jesus Christ, you also become a child of Abraham through the promise, all right? So, you must have 
the knowledge of the truth to be saved. You must have the knowledge of the truth to understand the truth to be saved, all right? So the truth is the only thing that is going to save you. The truth, knowing the truth, knowing, understanding, understanding the gospel. The truth is in the gospel of Jesus Christ. When you don't understand the truth, then you'll always be worried and fearing and asking yourself, have I done enough? You have to know the truth. First Timothy 3, 4. Let's go there. Let's see something here. First Timothy uh, 3, 4. All right. Mm, First Timothy, sorry, 2, 3. First Timothy. First Timothy 2, uh, from uh, 1 Timothy 2, uh, 3, 4. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of our God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and who and uh, to come unto the knowledge of the truth. So the Bible says you have to come to the knowledge of the truth. You have to understand the truth. You have to come to the knowledge of the truth. Understand what is the truth. The truth is in the gospel. Understanding the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's where the truth is. All right. So you are trust. You, you are saved by trusting the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right. And for those people who say, you know, the Bible says, uh, Call unto the name of God and you'll be saved. Call, call. You see, there are so many people who say that you calling. You know, you have to call. You have to say something with your lips. Eh? Call, call. You know, calling, when the Bible says calling, calling does not mean speaking with your mouth. Calling does not mean you opening your mouth. Let me show you. When you, be when you believe the gospel, you speak. When you believe. All right. When you believe the gospel, you speak. You have opened your mouth when you believe. Because God does not look on your lips. He doesn't want lip service. He wants your believing. For those people who say, you see, I'm only calling. I'm only, you know, guys, I need you to call God to save you. I need you to call. No. You call God by believing. Let me show you. Go to 2 Corinthians 4.13. 2 Corinthians uh, 4 verse 13. Mm -hmm. I, uh, we, this is Paul saying, uh, we having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believed and therefore I have spoken. I believed, Paul is saying, I believed and therefore I have spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. So the moment you believe, believing is speaking. All right? When you believe, you have spoken. So for those who say that I have to open my mouth and say this and this, say this and this and this, no. The Bible tells us, whosoever believes in me shall not perish but have everlasting life. Whosoever believes. Why is God not talking about whosoever says a certain thing or whosoever uh, repeats a sinner's prayer? No, those are lies. You have to believe, believe. When you believe, you are spoken. When you believe, you are spoken. According to God, you have already spoken. All right? So, the gospel has to be preached hard and understood. Like I've told you, you really have to speak the gospel. You have to, to hear the gospel preached. You have to, uh, to understand it, and then you have to believe it. So, the moment you believe, you have spoken. So you have to hear the gospel preached. You have to hear it after it has been spoken. You have to understand it and then you have to believe it. All right. Let me, let me, let me, let me uh, show you here Romans, Romans 15, 20. Romans, um, Romans 15, 20. I'll show you why it's important to hear the gospel preached. 15, uh, 20, 21. All right, Romans 15, 20 to 21. Yeah, so I have strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest uh, I should build upon another man's foundation, but it is written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see, and that they have not heard, shall understand. So you will see them preaching, speaking about the good news of Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection. And when you see and you hear and understand and you believe, then you will be saved. All right? So, I think I've told you uh, all about the gospel. And I'd like to ask you one thing. 
Do you believe the gospel? Do you understand what the gospel is? Do you believe the gospel? Because the weird thing is that you hear all these messages, you hear all these things, and then you have never believed the gospel. And at the end of the day, you die in your sin. You know, Jesus is about to come. Anytime he's about to come. And if you have not believed the gospel, then you're going to die in your sin. You have to understand the gospel. Because if you don't understand the gospel, then you're doomed. You're doomed and always you'll be thinking that you're saved. You remember when Jesus said, he said, on that day many will come saying to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not do great things in your name? Some of them will even be pastors. They'll be having great mega churches and say, oh Lord, you see we, we, we did all these things in your name. But then Jesus will ask you, did you believe the gospel? And that's why Jesus, we see the Bible saying that Jesus will tell you, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Why? No matter how much you cast out demons, you did all these things. Did you believe in the gospel? I told you to believe in the gospel. You went and believed in all the things that you do. So do you believe the gospel? Do you know the gospel? Gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it explains, let me read for you here, the gospel. All right, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have, been, you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died. You see that word there, how that Christ died. How did Jesus die? He died by shedding his own blood. He shed his blood for our sins. How that Christ died. He shed his own blood for our sins. According to the scriptures. And that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So there are five parts. There are five parts. I have five parts of uh, the gospel. And these things you have to understand and believe them. You believe that Christ. Christ died. Christ died for our sins. Alright? Jesus did not just die. He died for our sins. If you don't believe that he did die for your sins, then you're not saved. If you just believe he died, no. He died for our sins. He was buried. He was buried. Alright? Rose again. Rose again according to scriptures. All right. So these five parts you have to understand. How that? This is all about how. <coughs> Excuse me. How? How that Christ died? How did Jesus die? Jesus died in a very painful way, full of blood. He shed his own blood. He shed his own blood. So much blood he shed, that is how he died. If Jesus could not have shed his blood, then there could be no remission of sins. If Jesus could have died by heart attack or died of something else or drowning in water, there could be no shedding of blood and hence there could be no forgiveness of sins because the blood was very important. The blood was very important. So that is how he died. If you believe that Christ died, he didn't died in this manner, then you believe Christ, uh, God the Son. If you believe that he died for our sins, you believe that this whole action of death was not just in vain. It was for your sins. He was buried. It means that you believe Jesus was the sinless person who became the unleavened bread. He became sin for us. He became sin for those who uh, were, were sinners. He us. A person who had no sin, he became sin for us. That's why he was buried. He became the unleavened bread. All right? He rose again. If you believe Jesus rose again, he was risen by the power of the Holy Spirit. So you also believe God, the, the Holy Spirit. All right? So the same Holy Spirit who rose Jesus is the one who will raise you on that day. According to the scriptures. If you believe the scriptures, then you believe the word of God. All right? If you believe the scriptures, you believe the word of God. Because the whole of the scriptures... Was, was written by God. So once you believe this, 
my friend, you are, you are saved automatic. You don't need to say anything else. If you believe this and you put it in your heart, like I've told you, when you believe, you have spoken. Don't wait for another guy to wake up and start telling you other things that, oh, you need to do this, you have to eat this, you have to do that, you have to give this. You need to do nothing. Salvation is by faith in the finished work. This is the finished. 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 All right, work. Salvation is by faith in the finished work. You can't add even one single thing to the finished work. So if you have heard that, I believe uh, it was a great message. And I believe uh, that message will be able to help you in one way or another. You can share the message and then you can always be checking out. Every day I post videos. So I'm sure they can be of great blessing to you. God bless you and have a great, great day.